The four Kumaras visit Vakuntha. The abode of Vishnu. Jaya Vijaya. The demigod gatekeepers of Vakuntha. Fail to recognize them and deny them entry. The Kumaras curse the pair. Saying that they would have to give up divinity. Be born and live as mortal beings on earth. Vishnu fails to remove the curse. And offers two solutions. Be Vishnu's devotees in seven human lives. Or his enemies in three demonic lives. Jaya Vijaya cannot bear separation from Vishnu for so long. And choose the latter. In their first demonic lives. Jaya Vijaya are born as Hiranyakshipu and Hiranyaksha to the sage Kashyapar and earth goddess Diti. At sunset during an inauspicious time. Hiranyaksha. In an attempt to win over the deities. Torments the earth and its inhabitants. Bhudevi. The earth goddess. Goes to Vakuntha and seeks Vishnu's help. Vishnu arrives as Varaha. A wild boar faced avatar. Kills Hiranyaksha and saves the earth. Seeking revenge for his brother's death. Hiranyakshipu prays to Brahma for immortality. He becomes immune to being killed by various factors. Including by man or beast. Indra. King of the deities. Tries to kill Hiranyakshipu's wife Leelavati and her unborn child. The sage Narada intervenes and brings Leelavati to his hermitage. Where she gives birth to a boy named Pralada. Hiranyakshipu invades Vakuntha. But cannot find Vishnu. Proclaiming himself king of all the celestial worlds. He returns to earth. The deities approach Vishnu. Who promises to kill Hiranyakshipu at the appropriate time. Five years later. Pralada is sent to the hermitage of Chanda Amarka. The children of Hiranyakshipu's master. For his education. After returning from the hermitage, Hiranyakshipu learns that Pralada has become a staunch devotee of Vishnu and calls the deity Srihari. Hiranyakshipu explains to Pralada that Srihari was responsible for Hiranyaksha's death and is their enemy and asks him to stop worshipping Srihari. Pralada politely declines. Uddharan Chene. Hiranyakshipu then makes several attempts to kill his son. Hoping that the fear of death would make Pralada stop praying to Srihari. Pralada is starved. And imprisoned in a dark room. When he refuses to relent. Hiranyakshipu orders his soldiers to force elephants to trample Pralada. When that fails. They throw the boy off a steep cliff. Srihari rescues Pralada. The soldiers then summon a group of snake charmers and ask them to harm Pralada with snakes. The boy prays to Srihari. And the snakes become garlands of roses. Shocked. The snake charmers beg Pralada to bring the snakes back. He prays to Srihari. Who restores the snakes? The snake charmers declare Pralada their leader. Further angering Hiranyakshipu. Uddharan. He then orders his soldiers to tie Pralada's hands and feet and throw him into the sea. Convinced that the boy is dead. Hiranyakshipu laments killing his son to avenge his brother's death and the fact that the child had more love for Srihari than for him. Pralada is rescued by Srihari, who sends him back home. Initially happy to see the boy alive, Hiranyakshipu is angry that his son still worships Srihari. Narada confirms to Hiranyakshipu that Srihari is saving Pralada, adding that he resides in the boy, whose death would defeat him. In a final attempt, Hiranyakshipu orders Pralada to drink poisoned milk in front of him. The boy drinks it and survives. Making Hiranyakshipu believe that his death has arrived in the form of his son. When Hiranyakshipu asks Pralada about Srihari's abode, the boy replies that he is omnipresent. Hiranyakshipu then breaks a pillar with his mace, summoning Srihari out of it. Srihari arrives as Narsimha. Another avatar of Vishnu with a man's torso and a lion's face. And kills Hiranyakshipu. Narsimha's anger is cooled by Pralada and the deities. Who praise him in song and ask him to reappear as Srihari. Vishnu appears. Crowns Pralada as king of the demons. And advises him to lead a virtuous life as a ruler.